Hey, did I miss anything? Omid asked as he reached the top of the ladder. Nah, Lee said as he placed the blowtorch on the ground. He turned it on, but it didn't produce any flames. What's up? Omid asked. The hose must have a leak in it, Lee said. Shit, turn it off, man. I don't want to lose my eyebrows, Omid exclaimed as he backed away from the blowtorch. Lee bent over and turned it off. He didn't want to blow up either. Well, shit, what now? Omid asked. Lee hummed as he looked around. He noticed an abandoned traffic vehicle nearby. He went towards it and there had to be something in that vehicle. He opened up the trunk and discovered duct tape was in the back of a couple of stop signs and traffic cones. There we go. It seems our, like our lucky day, Lee said as he picked up the duct tape. What did you find? Omid asked as Lee returned. I found some duct tape, Lee said as he used some of it to cover up the hole in the hose. There we go, Lee said. He turned on the blowtorch on again and it produced a flame this time. Lee used the blowtorch to cut out the coupling of the second, dangling trailer from the rest of the ring, which was still on the bridge. Wow, look at it go, Omid said. Almost got it, Lee said. He could see a couple of a weakening, but however, he was suddenly pulled away. He fell onto the ground as Lee looked up to see the trailer on the road had moved to where he was standing. Whoa, nice save, he said. He stood up. No sweat. Omid said. Lee went over to examine the coupling. He was so close to breaking it off, but it was out of his reach. Lee sighed and said, Omid here. He gave the blowtorch to Omid. The coupling's out of my reach. And you think it'll be in mine? Omid asked with a chuckle. No, but I'm gonna try and hang you over the edge so you can reach it, Lee said. The hell you are, Omid exclaimed. Hmm, that's not too bad. Here, I thought you might want to drive that train, Lee said with a smirk. By the way, it's a blast to drive. I've got a half hour behind the wheel. Omida gripped his teeth and grumbled. Damn it, fuck! Lee could hear and see the jealousy in Omid's eyes. Lee started up the blowtorch and held on to Omid as he dangled over the edge and started cutting the dangling trailer off from the rest of the rig. Gosh, you're a real son of a bitch. You know, aren't you? Omid said. Shut up and start cutting, Lee said. Um, guys, there's something coming, Ben announced. Lee looked up and saw a huge herd of walkers limping towards the boxcar. It was surprising there had been at least a hundred walkers leading towards the train. No doubt there was more. What the hell is that? Omid asked. We gotta go now, Ben exclaimed as he came down from the boxcar. There must be hundreds, Lee said. Omid, cut, cut! I am, Omid said. There was a groan from the metal, and then Omid said, Okay, it's going. Pull me up. Lee obliged, and he pulled Omid back up to the bridge. Lee could see the group members scurry onto the train as the herd grew closer. He was a bit worried, but his worry subsided when he heard a loud thud from the ground. It was the dangling trailer hitting the ground. The train was clear. Kenny, go! Lee exclaimed. The train slowly started to move, just like what they have left with Wyatt and Russell. The train took time taking off. A as a distraction, Lee kicked down the blowtorch to the gasoline and leaking out the trailer below. It had a fire which would distract the walkers and serve an obstacle for the undead creatures. Holy crap, Omid said. Lee then turned and ran over to the other side of the bridge. He got ready to jump off. Omid soon joined him. The train appeared underneath him. We gotta jump, Lee said. What? No way, Omid exclaimed. Jump, Lee said. The boxcar came into view. There wasn't much time to argue. Still no, Omid said. Fine, Lee said. As he dropped down to the boxcar, he didn't want to disappoint Clementine and get separated from her. He landed on top of the boxcar with a groan. He was thankful that he didn't bust anything. He had sat upright and heard a loud shout. He saw Omid on the ground while holding his leg. Lee went to the boxcar and he got inside. He noticed that Krista jumping out to run out to help Omid. Clementine smiled to see him. But Lee had to focus on getting Krista and Omid on the train. The young couple ran alongside the train. Instinctively, Lee chose to save Omid, since he was injured. He got Omid inside as the train sped faster. Krista disappeared for, from the view for a few couple seconds, which horrified Omid. Krista, no! Omid exclaimed. He then looked over at Lee with a glare and he exclaimed, You asshole, she's a woman, and you left her behind! 
You were hurt, Lee said. Krista suddenly reappeared and ran inside. It's okay, sweetie, Krista said to Omid. I slowed down so you can get inside and save you some of the energy. Everything okay? Clementine asked. She was being held by Bud. Yeah, everything's okay, Lee said. Speak for yourself. My leg is fucked, Omid said. We're fine, Clementine. We're fine. Everyone's alive and that's all that matters, Krista said. Lee stood up and took the toddler from Bud. Thanks for looking after her, Bud, Lee said. The girl relaxed more in Lee's grip as she cuddled to him. Any time, Bud said. I think she missed you. Lee chuckled before he patted her on the back. It's okay, sweetie. Those monsters won't get you, Lee said. I'd better go check on everyone else, Bud said. I'll see if Katja can stitch up Omid's wound. He then turned to look at the door that would lead to the locomotive. Lee sat down with Clementine on his lap. He had her color along with Danielle. Since everything had calmed down, Chuck sat down and watched the toddlers play. Meanwhile, Krista helped Omid. I've never seen so many of them up before, Krista said. Do you, do you think it's possible that the noise of the train attracted them? Lee asked. Well, it, it's, it wasn't exactly discreet, Omid said. We could have heard some, they could have heard something from a mile away. That's not good, Vince said. I don't even think about this. I thought the walkers would disperse after losing sight of the train. It wouldn't matter, Omid said. All they would have to do is follow the sound. Krista and I have been around these scenes for a long time. They're more attracted to sound than sight. And trust me, this is something is plenty loud, Krista said. Well, that ain't good, Vince said. Where are we going anyway? Krista asked. Savannah. The train goes to Savannah, Chuck said. Clementine gasped as she exclaimed, My mommy and daddy are there! We'll try and find your parents, Clem, Lee said. Who knows? Maybe they're okay. I hope so, Clementine said. Well, wherever we're going, we'll do our best and business to be as fast and b leave before the herd catches up, Krista said. I guess it wouldn't do any need good to ditch the train now, Vince said. It probably won't. At least with the train for this some distance between them and us, Omid said. The door opened with Katja and Bud entering the boxcar. Let me take a look, Katja said, as she looked at Omid's leg. Are you a doctor or a nurse? Krista asked. Neither. I was a veterinarian. Again, Katja said. Krista's eyes widened as she heard this. It's all right. Katja's got plenty of experience under her belt, Bud said. Krista sighed and she nodded. Lee glanced back to Clementine. He was glad that the toddler was so happy, but a part of him hoped that her parents weren't in Savannah. He kicked himself for even thinking that, but he still enjoyed the little girl. He loved her, and he didn't want her to be taken away by her parents. All he could do was enjoy the little time he had left with the toddler in case her real parents were still alive in Savannah. So is that a flower? Lee asked Clementine. Yeah, I like flower, Clementine said. I bet you do. Are they pretty? Lee asked. Clementine nodded and said, yeah. She continued to draw in her paint until suddenly it stopped. What's wrong, baby? Lee asked. I'm hungry, Clementine said. Me too, Danielle said. Well, I guess we ought to fix it, Lee said. He looked through around Clementine's bag until he found some animal crackers, applesauce, a cheddar cheese, cracker snack, and a drink. She began to eat the cheese and cracker snack while taking sips of her drink while Lee played with strands of her curly brown hair. You've got a wild hair for your age. Clementine giggled and she asked, that w what what that mean? Your hair is long and a bit messy, Lee said. I should have it put up put it up last night. Mommy say same thing. Ing, Clementine said. Yeah, that's how moms are, Lee said. He tried to untangle the girl's wild curly hair as she finished eating and started to draw in color in her coloring book. Lee was amazed at by how calm she would be. At this age, children would be bouncing off walls, but both toddlers were very calm. The evening soon turned into night, and the group members turned in for the evening. But once again, Bud and Kenny switched places on the control of the train. In the afternoon, the group started to walk through the streets of Savannah in relative silence. The toddlers and Duck were told to be quiet and to avoid any drawing attention. The toddlers seemed content. They kept looking around at the nearby buildings while staying closer to their guardians. How's Omid holding up? Lee asked. 
I'm fine, Omid said. No, you're not. You're in pain, and you need rest, Krista said. She then turned to Lee and said, He needs to rest. You're right. Ken, hold up, Lee said. Kenny ignored Lee as the group slowed down to halt. Ken, Oneet, Mead needs to rest, Bud said to Kenny. Kenny grumbled before he turned and said, We're almost at the river. Almost to the boats. It wouldn't hurt anything if we stopped for a few minutes, Bud said. Kenny then shook his head and grumbled something incoherent. Meanwhile, Omid huffed as he sat down. Thanks, guys. However, the group's minute of rest soon turned to an end when they heard a bell. It sounded like a church bell. It was deep and loud. The group tensed up and Omid got to his feet. What that? Clementine asked. Is that a bell? Yes, it is, Lee said. He and Vince picked up the toddlers. The two girls didn't complain much to the adults' surprise. No one's ringing that bell. It's on the timer, Kenny said. Lee checked his wristwatch and said, What bell rings at 20 past the hour? Regardless, we need to get off the street before every walker in the city gets here. That bell will lure them, Bud said. What about the boat? Benny sna Jenny Kenny snapped. Go and get your damn boat if that's so important to you, Bud said. The rest of us are going to get to safety. Kenny, please, just listen to him, Katja said. Kenny growled and said, Fine, we'll do it your way, for now. Bud huffed and he went down before he went down the streets and went to one of the houses. Several walkers were limping around towards the sound of the bell as Bud whipped around and turned and went into the backyard of a large house. The group members followed him as the walkers growled and groaned. A couple of walkers tried to follow the group, but they were unable to keep up. The group entered the fenced-in backyard of a large house. The group's haste to get in the backyard as Omid tripped. He groaned in pain as he hit the ground. Shit, Krista muttered. She then went to Kenny to his side as Kenny and Ben rushed over to try to get the door open. Meanwhile, Bud took care of the two walkers at the fence. I'm fine, Omid said. No, you're not fine, Krista said. You opened up your wound again and you're bleeding everywhere. It's going to get infected. We're going to be in serious trouble. No offense, but you really need to work on besides man your manner, Omid said. Kenny, how is that door coming? Bud asked. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Kenny said. Here, let me have a go at it, Chuck said. He walked over to the door. Lock picking happens to be one of my skills. He started to try and mess with the door, along with Kenny and Ben. Down, please, Clementine said. Lee smiled and said, okay, but don't go anywhere near the fence. He placed the girl on the ground. She smiled and, Lee, and looked to Lee, and she said, okay. Vince did the same thing as the two girls scampered off to explore their new surroundings. Lee made sure to keep an eye on the two girls, but he also wanted to walk over and talk to Bud. How are you doing, Bud? Lee asked. Bud sighed and said, I can't stop thinking about her. I had a dream about her last night. The world was back to normal. We we were married, had kids, got old. He sighed before he continued. Then I woke up. Lee frowned. He knew that he was talking about Carly. I'm sorry, Bud. We all are, Lee said. Bud sighed and said, I should have killed Lily when I had the chance. I won't make that mistake again. Bud, it's over. Lily's dead, Lee said. Yeah, but I should have never let it go that far. I should have stopped her. Maybe then Carly would have made it, Bud said. Lee huffed and said, We know better now. We'll never let something like that ever happen again. Yeah, Bud said. Yes, damn it, Kenny exclaimed. Chuck turned and he said, I'm a little rusty, but we're in. Good job, Chuck, Bud said. He walked over to the door as Kenny and Ben went inside. Chuck walked over to help Omid while Vince and Lee went to get Clementine and Danielle. Come on, girls, let's get inside, Vince said. But we're not done looking yet, Danielle said. You can look around later, Vince said. Let's just get inside, okay? Okay, Danielle said. She then shook, okay, took his hand and led her inside. Lee also took Clementine's hand and led her inside. Whoa, this place is huge, Duck said in his static voice. Ducky, Katja said with a chuckle. We better take a good look around and make sure this place is abandoned, D Bud said. Yeah, that sounds good. Kid and I will look upstairs. You, Chuck, check downstairs, Kenny said. All right, Bud said. Kenny went upstairs with Ben following Ling while Bud looked around the bottom floor. 
Krista helped Omid to a nearby sofa while Duck and the two toddlers started to draw and color. Omid groaned in pain as he lay down on the sofa. Sorry, Krista said. No, it's okay. Feeling better thereby just being off of my feet, Omid lied. Thanks, babe. I could tell you're in pain, Krista said. Omid chuckled and said, I never really was good at lying. Katya went over and checked the wound. Omid, Katya said as she looked it over. Can you help him? Katya, Katya Krista asked. I, I can't. We're all out of ma medicine and bandages, Katya said. There was a loud crash from the other room, and Vince and Lee jumped out in the sound when they went to the source that, that did of it. Hey, Bud said. Don't move. A woman's voice was heard. Lee then recognized the voice. It sounded familiar to him, but he didn't know where it was from. He and Vince went into the kitchen to see a woman holding a Bud at gunpoint. Lee's eyes widened when she saw the woman. It was Diana. Clementine's mother. He knew it was her. She had thinned out from the photo that of she saw of her, but he could tell that it was her.